So once you make the decision to extubate, it's very important to communicate this with the family or uh, prepare them in, adv in advance when you discuss the plan the previous day, for example. Ensure that they understand that this is a calculated uh, risk. And obviously, any baby who's extubated has a chance of getting reintubated so that they're mentally prepared and tell them it's not necessarily a catastrophe or a disaster. It's just what the baby needs at that time and explain why we have to try to extubate even though there is a risk of failure. Uh, hold the feeds for two to three hours prior and uh, if after the first two to three hours of reintubation as well, you may want to hold the feeds and restart with a smaller volume. If the baby doesn't have an IV line, you may uh, restart the feed sooner, but at a slightly lower volume and progress. Uh, ensure that the adequate suction is done, both the nose and oral. Uh, nasal suction is important because the NIV will only be effective if the nase is patent. But again, stress on appropriate suctioning without uh, damaging the septum or causing trauma and saline installation uh, so that the nose is patent. Uh, ensure adequate humidification as well. In the tiniest babies, it may help to follow the invasive mode for the humidity if your uh, circuit allows without a rain out. Uh, keep the equipment ready for starting non-invasive ventilation without interruption soon after the extubation. So uh, obviously it's very important that uh, we don't waste time. If you have any issues with the equipment, you can use the Neopuff or uh, TP's device with a mask CPAP while things are being sorted. If you are planning an APPV, you can use a slightly higher CPAP pressure. Uh, ensure the caffeine dose is given as due before we extubate. And uh, always any extubation, there is a risk of reintubation. So keep the equipment ready uh, next to you when you extubate the baby so that you don't have to struggle if you need reintubation. So uh, the measures to improve success, obviously an adequate level of non-invasive ventilation is very important. We preferably give NIPPV for the tiny babies and CPAP. High flow can be considered in the bigger babies, but in the smaller babies, less than 28 weeks, it has been shown to be inferior at extubation to CPAP or NIPA PPV. So uh, if there is evidence of post-extubation strider, we can consider nebulized racemic epinephrine, one to two doses, and uh, nebulized glutosonide can be given if the baby has uh, worsening distress. If there is a previous history of subglottic edema or strider, we could consider peri-extubation uh, steroid, which is a slightly higher dose than the DART. Some of us use 250 microgram dose, but it's a quite high dose, so 150 microgram may be adequate, one or two doses before extubation. Um, but be careful with overusing this in the tiny babies because it's a steroid as well, and obviously the neurodevelopmental risk stays even though it's not for extubation, it's given for edema. Uh, there is no clear evidence to support the use of diuretics or routine nebulized steroids, so please avoid these. And uh, non-invasive ventilation is continued uh, at least for 24 hours post extubation and in the smaller babies as recent evidence is coming in we tend to continue uh, non-invasive ventilation till at least 32 weeks to avoid the risk of uh, intermittent hypoxemic episodes so you may keep a lower level of CPAP or high flow for these babies during this period when they are maturing and establishing feeds. So there is a question of what pressure on non-invasive ventilation once we extubate so don't be worried about using a higher PEEP and if you're using a ram cannula, for example, the pressure measurement is not what the baby is going to get because of the circuit resistance. So you may need to add 30%. So if you're giving 26, the baby may be getting 20 or 22. So don't be worried about the numbers as long as uh, the baby is not over distended uh, in terms of chest splinting. And uh, the retractions are uh, persistent. You may need to increase the pressure. A recent study comparing higher pressures with a CPAP of 8 to 9 uh, has been shown to be better than the regular pressure of uh, 6 centimeters. And as I mentioned, peepophobia in the unit has to be addressed. Don't be scared of a higher number. Uh, the experienced nursing team is key, and if the baby needs a higher pressure, they should be confident enough to increase. Uh, switching from CPAP to NAPPV is an option as well. Uh, in the bigger babies, you can start with the high flow uh, nasal cannula, humidified high flow nasal cannula at 6 to 8 liters. but as I said, in the smaller babies, it's better to start CPAP or NAPPV. Uh, we already stressed on the need for expert nursing care and minimal handling in the immediate post-extubation period. We should try our best to avoid reintubation, so take extra precautions around this. A good handover is important at shift changes as well. Skin-to-skin uh, -skin care uh, may be deferred for the initial few hours till the baby is stable. Uh, if the baby is on a larger volume OG feeds, you may want to uh, empty the stomach for a couple of hours or restart with a smaller volume and build up to the same volume over a few hours. Once you know 
maybe start getting well off the ventilator. And if there is shallow breathing, consider an additional loading dose of caffeine as we discussed. Give it earlier rather than later. Uh, if once a baby starts getting into the cycle of apnea and losing the lung volume, then you are bound to need uh, additional support or even re-ventilation. Normally, we suggest to review the blood gas two to three hours after the extubation, but if you have concerns, you can do it earlier. Uh, the further prog plan uh, for the blood gases should depend on the clinical condition. If the baby is stable, you can probably do it the next day.